you with the sad eyes Don't be discouraged Oh, I realize It's hard to take courage In a world full of people You can lose sight of it all And the darkness inside you you feel so small But I see your true colors shining through I see your true colors and that's why I love you So don't be afraid to let them show Your true colors are beautiful like a rainbow Welcome again, everyone, to TNS Radio Ireland, leading voice in a reestablishment of human rights, liberty, representation, and justice across the world. You are listening to Mike Montagna, original 1968 architect of Mathematically Perfected Economy, speaking on Mathematically Perfected Economy and Absolute Consensual Representation. Archives of this program can be downloaded freely at tnsradio.com from the category Mike Montagna and from the domain perfecteditconomy.org. Original material, analyses, and solution, as always, are copyright and trademarked by yours truly, Mike Montagna. All rights and therefore claims of authority are reserved. Copies of this program can be distributed freely only so long as the entirety of this program, including this copyright and trademark notice, remain intact. Good to have you with us. Given the arguments we've presented over the past year, vital arguments which have already withstood 43 years of scrutiny, thus having this and further material to rely upon, particularly for further detail. I wanted today to provide the briefest possible synopsis of mathematically perfected economy, its implementation, inherent means of establishment, and implications. We have one problem and we have one solution. What then does all that we have covered mean? Our thesis explains, first of all, how and why the world's purported economies engender their own failure as a consequence of maintaining circulations of a purposely obfuscated currency. We have proven these systems can only fail. We have proven they fail as a consequence of an unjustifiable obfuscation of our currency. We have even proven that across the near future, a sum of falsified indebtedness can only be further multiplied beyond terminal failure. We have proven the life cycle of every such system is finite. In fact, the inevitable terminus of the previous life cycle precipitated in what we call the first Great Depression. The present obfuscation destroyed and dispossessed us then, but 15 years after its unassented imposition falsely promised that obfuscation would solve all the problems it in fact can only cause. So well do we understand this process of inevitable failure, and so well even can we project it, that I of course even provided the first Reagan administration with computer models, which in 1983 and 4 
projected that the present failure would transpire at approximately 2010 AD. Here we are. And what do we effectively do about all this? Obfuscation. What have I meant by this term? Obfuscation means to render unclear, obscure, or unintelligible. Purposed obfuscation, therefore, means to purposely bewilder. What I mean by a purposed obfuscation of our currency, therefore, is that there is an intention to bewilder, concealing a purpose which, of course, is entirely adverse to the common purposes of all just people. A just people, beset with such an obfuscation, therefore, must overcome their own confusion if they are to prevail over whatever is destructive to their common purposes. What I wanted to do today is to deny all credible people any reasonable excuse not to understand both the present cause of global monetary failure and its singular solution. For as we have proven over and over and over again, we can not only establish that solution in as little as a day, but even virtually without cost. Ours is a story then, not only about how to do this, but that there is a singular way to accomplish this indispensable purpose. But thus, it is also a story about why each of us must understand how to do this, because it is a story that we must do this, because, as we have already so often proven, otherwise, we ourselves, all of us, suffer terminal monetary failure and dispossession. Our message, then, is first how and why the purported economies of the world can only fail. It is next a proof of one and one only integral solution for all the faults and injustices of the imposed systems. It is next a proof of one just means not only for terminating falsified debts to a purported banking system, but for transforming any of the present imposed systems into mathematically perfected economy, not only immediately, but even virtually without cost. In the process of establishing the facts upon which solution depends, we thus establish the only legitimate legal leverage by which even every diligent citizen can even dissolve their own falsified debts to their one just and therefore one justifiable state. Inevitably, our vital principles apply not only to our private falsified debts, but to public falsified debts and in turn to taxation. Finally, then, the arguments of one and one only justifiable, mathematically perfected economy overcome a global denial of representation in a global mandate for mathematically perfected economy and absolute consensual representation. This mandate, of course, in turn then, is the only reasonable vehicle for restoring justice and insulating ourselves from the further consequences of the present purposed obfuscation of our currency. Because the only veritable path to a restoration or establishment of true justice 
against a purposed denial of representation is itself prevailing irrefutable arguments of one and one only solution proving the present monumental injustices against us, declaring and even criminalizing each and every resultant crime, eradicating these crimes ourselves by united mandate, and even claiming the rights of sovereign citizens to do so ourselves, irrespective even of a prospective opposing majority each of whom, in turn, we hold responsible for their consequences. In the end, then, our mandate not only claims the inherent rights of sovereign individuals to rectify our own falsified debts to purported banking systems, however public or private, our own falsified responsibilities might be falsely claimed to be. In doing so, our mandate further proves in irrefutable lawful terms that the purported banking system has no rightful claim either to principal or to interest, for contrary to the proposition it loans non-existent money into existence. The purported banking system merely publishes evidence or further representations of our very own promissory obligations to each other. It never gives up lawful consideration equivalent to the debts it falsifies to itself, nor then does it risk property as ostensibly justifies interest. Nor does it even loan money. It merely publishes evidence of our own promissory obligations. First, unjustifiably laundering the principal into its unrightful possession, and then only as if lawful consideration were at stake, it ever unjustifiably imposes interest which multiplies falsified indebtedness into the present terminal falsified indebtedness evident everywhere around us. In prevailing against the crimes against us, our irrefutable arguments, therefore, hinge upon a fact of whether, in creating money, purported banks ever give up lawful consideration commensurable to the falsified debts they claim from us. In order for each of us to understand this issue as we must then, if we are to prevail either ourselves or as an ultimately united whole, we must understand what I have called a purposed obfuscation of our currency. In order for us to understand these things as we must, we must recognize the only explanations which can save us. Of course, any proper scrutiny of a credible thesis, which ultimately must be considered so prevailingly important to all the purposes of the world, would require that thesis be submitted in a fully accountable manner. So we have raised its every necessary detail of every important principle, as I have for the past 43 years, still without veritable invalidation. Today already, the purported banking systems of the world can neither produce nor otherwise 